Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Tony from McLaren St. Luke's Family Medicine, and if we do the, the third Wednesday of each month, give a talk on a different medical topic. Today, we have Dr. Mystery from our McLaren St. Luke's Family Medicine that's going to talk about constipation. You know, as we get older, we our, our, our worries shift. And one of the things we worry about, believe it or not, is our bowel movements, which, which very well we should be, you know, keeping that in mind. Um, so she's going to just talk about some different information when it's a concern, um, some over the counter things you should, uh, you can consider, but when you need to talk to your doctor about it, and then uh, it's a short talk, but it's a very good talk. So um, I'll turn it over to her and then we'll stick around in case you have any personal questions. Thank you. So hi everyone, thank you for coming. I'm um, talking about constipation today. So um, just to kind of define it, it's actually a disease. So some of us, we don't think about constipation being an actual disease, but it is and affects people of all ages, affects babies all the way up to old age. So um, people, especially 50% of nursing home residents actually experience constipation. So it is a real issue. It can hold us back, it's painful. So uh, I'm just going to talk about types of constipation, what causes it, and then most importantly, what we can do. So um, primary constipation broken down into three types. So first one is what we call normal transit. So this one is the most common. So the way our muscles contract and relax in our bowels is not changed here. Um, but the problem is, even though you're having normal number of stools, um, you're having hard stools and trouble um, getting them out. Uh, another type is slow transit, so you're not having enough stools, and this is the one that causes more of that discomfort, that pain, that lower belly pain as well. This is usually due to your diet, so lack of fiber, different nutrition that you're not getting in your diet is causing this, um, so you're just not growing enough. Um, and then disorders of defecation, so this is most common in the elderly population. Um, it's due to normal changes that happen in our body, unfortunately, as we get older. So um, as we get older, that urge to have to go to the bathroom goes down. Um, so it leads to having larger quantities of stool, but maybe it's happening only once uh, every few days. So that's not comfortable at all. Um, secondary constipation is more, is, I'd say it's more common in younger populations, but it affects other people as well, um, usually due to a chronic disease process or medication. So if you're taking something like an opiate um, heavy pain medication, those cause us to have constipation as well. Other medications, iron supplements. So if you're on iron, they usually recommend you take a stool softener with it because that can cause constipation. Um, chemotherapy medications, medications for nausea, vomiting. Um, a lot of NSAIDs, so by that I mean things like Advil and Motrin, things you take pretty regularly can cause constipation as well. Um, heartburn medication, so if you're taking like omeprazole, which your doctor might give you over-the-counter Pepsid, even Tums, those can cause constipation as well. Um, and then I have psychosocial issues, so anxiety, stress, um, depression, things going on in your daily life. Um, maybe you're just busy and you don't have time to go to the bathroom, so you hold it in for a little while, and then you don't actually end up going that day. So things like that can cause constipation as well. A little bit easier to manage. So. Going into management, uh, most important thing to all of us is how can we fix this? So the goal when somebody comes to us with constipation is how to decrease that discomfort. So that's probably when you're finally going to tell your doctor about this, is when you're starting to have a lot of pain. Um, so we want to help that first, and then we'll try to work on getting more formed stools. So non-medical management. Um, I like to have patients schedule bathroom breaks after meals. So if you can just, after you've eaten, try to go to the bathroom, just sit for a little while, see if you can try to do that after every meal, um, scheduling it can help a lot as well. Um, placing your feet on a small step stool on the floor. So I don't know if you've seen those commercials, they're called squatty potties. <laughs> um, they're actually very helpful, but even if you have a little stool you can place in front of your toilet, just to put your feet up a little bit, that helps. So. When you eat, food goes down through your digestive system, it goes to your stomach, to your small intestine, to your large intestine, eventually it gets to your rectum. So in your rectum, we have a muscle that's kind of in the shape of a U, um, which kind of makes it hard to get the stool out. So if you think of a garden hose that's kind of kinked up, um, doesn't all flow through correctly. So if you put your feet 
feet up on a stool, it kind of allows that muscle to kind of go like this, um, bend over a little bit to help the stool come out a little bit faster. Um, so helps to bend the colon a lot easier. So I would definitely try that. Um, and allow yourself to have adequate time. If you can't go right away, it's okay. Just try a little bit longer. Um, if somebody's using a bedpan, I try to avoid those as much as possible because the way you're laying down, it's not going to make it easier for the stool to come through. Um, exercise, I know people talk about exercise. It doesn't actually help uh, with constipation. It helps a lot of other things and it's a great thing, but um, exercise won't actually help with constipation. And then increasing fiber intake is super important. So we recommend about 20 to 35 grams of fiber a day. So just um, kind of put it into perspective, one banana has about three to four grams of fiber. Um, a cup of beans, so black beans, kidney beans, any type of beans you like has about 30 grams of fiber. So um, if you have some beans for dinner, um, you're pretty much getting your fiber for the day. Um, so increase it slowly in your diet. Um, if you just suddenly start increasing fiber in your diet, um, you'll start getting a little bit of bloating and gas, things like that. So just slowly, if you're not having a lot of fiber, I recommend just starting slow and increasing it slowly. Um, whole grain foods, so bread, cereals, lots of vegetables, fruits, prunes. I don't know if anybody here likes prunes. Uh, <laughs> um, prune juice specifically, if it says um, 100%. Prunes is you know, made of that juice. It's actually the sorbitol, the sugar that's in the prune that helps um, bring um, the stool out. So it's a good idea. Whole beans, corn, and of course water. Lots of hydration will always help um, push things through as well. So medication. So I have these broken down to different types because I know there's tons of things over the counter can get a little confusing. So bulking agents, so those are things like your Metamucil, your Cytosol, your Benefiber. So Metamucil, you probably have seen in the orange uh, tub, um, tastes like orange, they have sugar-free ones too. Um, these things typically take anywhere from 12 to 72 hours to work. So I like to tell patients to take this at night before they go to bed within a cup of water. Um, if you like, Benefiber actually has no taste and it doesn't change um, the way your drink is. You can put it in your coffee, you can put it in your tea at night, whatever you're drinking, and it won't change the taste, it won't change the consistency. So a lot of people like that. But if you drink it at night, um, it'll increase your chances of having a nice stool in the morning. So those I really like. Um, they kind of absorb into the intestine, so they increase the bulk, they soften the stool. And of course, drink this with lots of water to avoid dehydration. Uh, stool softener, so I like to call this kind of the mush. Um, you want to use these with um, something like an osmotic agent, which I'll talk about in a second. But this makes your stool that's kind of sitting up in your colon softer. So things like colate, so it's also called docusate, you've probably seen over the counter as well. I have a picture of it down there. Um, this is something you can take twice a day, every day. Um, nothing wrong with taking this every day, just to kind of keep your stool nice and soft. Um, it lowers the surface tension of the stool, so it helps to kind of come through, and of course, it's with lots of water. Um, and then osmotic agents, so this is the push. So we had the mush, and now this is something that's gonna push it all through. Um, so something like near last or go lightly. Um, those are things you see over the counter. Um, try to avoid these if you have really high blood pressure or kidney disease. Um, if you're following a low sodium diet, they do tend to have a little bit of that in there. These work um, about 24 to 48 hours. So work pretty quickly. So if you're having a lot of trouble, if you drink this, you can take this every single day. Um, it's not gonna hurt anything at all. Um, they also have something called magnesium citrate. It's actually what you, they use in colonoscopy, um, but you can have your doctor prescribe this for you if you're having trouble. Um, obviously, the amount is a lot smaller than what you would get in a colonoscopy, <laughs> but um, this works oh, yeah. in about 30 minutes. So I once know. you get this, you should have a nice stool in about 30 minutes. So that's if you're having a lot of pain, you just haven't gone in like a week or two, uh, ask your doctor about magnesium citrate because that'll be something they'll be able to help you with. Um, with this one, just because it's pushing things out pretty quickly, it can cause low blood pressure. So if you tend to run low, they probably be a little careful with that. And then the last category we have is laxative. So this is more of the rush, which works in about six to 10 hours of taking it. So things like Dilcolax, uh, Senecot, Senna, those things over the counter. Um, don't recommend taking these regularly you need to your body getting used to it, very dependent on it. Eventually it will stop working. So this is just kind of a, just to help me 
things move in and once that works you can supplement with the stool softeners and the mirror wax together and then you can get in pretty regular so that is all i have today anybody have any questions yeah. they also have a tea they call smooth move uh-huh it works oh <laughs> i mean seriously i don't know why i don't really know what it's got in it yeah but it's, it's a tea okay